Just 10 cents a day helps fund local programs like Scenic Stops, Northwest Ohio Journal, and BGSU Brain Game. Watch. Connect. Explore. America's first all-metal airliner. Every airliner we have flying today, every airline that we had flying today had its start with the Ford Trimotor. A lot of history of the Trimotor at this airport here on the use of over to the islands. People recognize when the Trimotor is flying over, they recognize the distinct sound of it. We feel that uh, there's real heritage of that here at the airport. People needed transportation, uh, both in the summertime and most importantly during the winter. The lake would freeze over, at which time all the ferries would stop operating. And the only mode of transportation people had were, were the airlines. Uh, so we provided, uh, we were a school bus, um, we provided uh, ambulance service, um, police service, uh, any grocery service, any means of goods and services that came and went to the islands. They could take passengers, they could take freight, they could take whatever you could get in that round door and some things you couldn't get in the round door. Uh, we've heard stories of, of uh, box springs being strapped to the outside of the aircraft. The kitchen cabinets would go over, but they wouldn't quite make it all the way in. The airplane was produced, mass produced, on an assembly line, and uh, was, was simply constructed, simply made. Um, and it, its brake system was somewhat different than, than, uh, than the than normal airplane. Um, it's got truck tires and, and brake systems on it. Um, it had a lot of the Model T, had a Model T steering wheel. It had uh, starter buttons that came off a of Model T um, era. The magneto switches all came from, from the auto industry. So it was, it was uh, Henry Ford's way of getting into aviation. Right now, they, uh, they just take people back to what flying used to be before security and air traffic control and concrete runways. And it's kind of a lot of fun to fly. You sit right up front and uh, have a nice view. And it sounds and uh, feels like an old airplane. Everybody seems to have a really good time. A lot of people have fun in it. We've had uh, people that took their first airplane ride in a Ford Trimotor. I've never seen anybody get off that wasn't smiling. And I can say that uh, I can't, really can't believe anybody's been unhappy when they uh, exited the airplane. It's a treat to get, a, get in the Ford and go for a ride. I used to fly in it back in the early 60s to go to North Bass out in Lake Erie ice fishing. And uh, it was always a treat. I had a ride in it this weekend and the rumble every time I ride it, it feels like it's the first time. As the Ford because Trimotor, so lights enthusiasts as the Tim Goose flies overhead. The sound induces nostalgia for many longtime Port Clinton residents.
It's a very slow airplane. Um, it's suited for un unimproved, very short strips, which all the islands have, very small airstrips. It holds 15 passengers, plus quite a bit of payload. So it's, a, it's, it's well suited for what this, what this area needs. They tried some different airplanes, but for the mission that they had, hauling the cargo, hauling the freight, they needed something that flew a little bit slower. You could land slower, short takeoff and landing. Uh, and this was just a perfect airplane for it. It's three engines, plenty of power, thing can haul anything and uh, get into the short runways on the islands. Well, there's about a dozen and a half tri-motors that are still around. Um, almost all of them are locked up in museums and uh, you can't get them out. This one here is a, literally a flying museum piece. It uh, comes to us from Oshkosh, but there's, there's about a dozen and a half of them still around. The Tin Goose was produced by Henry Ford in 1925 as their introduction into the aviation industry, though some parts of the plane were borrowed from Ford's automobile production lines.
The Ford Trimotor's versatile features made it ideal for flights to and from the islands. The reason why people get to experience this piece of aviation history firsthand is in large part thanks to the effort and passion of the EAA, the Experimental Aviation Association, a group of aircraft aficionados that build, restore, and preserve a variety of aircraft. The Port Clinton chapter of the EAA is doing more than just honoring their history. They're bringing it back to life. What sets us apart from all the other EAA chapters is our trimotor restoration project that we have. Uh, I don't know if you've seen in the hangar or not, but uh, we are restoring a 5AT Ford trimotor, which is kind of like the one that's flying here today, a little bit larger. Uh, but as far as we know, that is the most ambitious project one EAA chapter has ever taken on. So we're getting known all over the country for kind of taking on such a big task. We've been working on that one uh, just a little over five years now. There's about a dozen of us so far. We have dedicated volunteers. Uh, we work two nights a week, Monday and Thursday nights, and uh, we've just kind of been chipping away at it. So, <laughs> None of us had experience uh, working uh, with anything like this. I had been around aviation and airplane uh, flying for years and had watched people do similar work to this, but not to this magnitude. And as I tell other people that want to come in, you don't need any kind of special skills, we'll just go ahead and uh, you'll learn on the job. We're taught what to do, but there's a certain point that we're going to need a real mechanic to come in and start doing the serious work, and we're going to have to raise funds to do that. So we're trying to get it done five, six years. While the Port Clinton EAA's tin goose may be a few years down the road, the operational trimotor from the EAA headquarters in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, still excites the imaginations of the people who are lucky enough to fly under its strong, corrugated aluminum wings. From the runways of Island Airlines to the rafters of the Smithsonian, the Tin Goose has left its mark on aviation history. Though practically all the remaining trimotors are now museum relics, the Port Clinton EAA are working diligently to give people a chance to take a ride back through history. Scenic Stops is brought to you by WBGU-TV. Support great local programming by giving now at wbgu.org pledge.